Chair, President and fellow speakers, I'm sure we can all agree that what we say actually is important. Words can hurt and they can cause long-lasting psychological scars, but it's the way that we say something also important. Listen to these sentences. A woman without her man is nothing. Now, say it a bit different way. A woman without her man is nothing. Can you see the difference? One implies that the woman is more important than the other than the man. It is important where we pause and where we have our commas. But I have another question for you. Does it matter how we pronounce our words as long as they can be understood and the meaning is clear? Do we all need to sound the same? What about the person with a strong dialect or accent? Or a person that has a slight stammer? My early experiences, I'd like to just share my experiences with you. When I was a young child, I spent a lot of time on my own. Um, my mother went out to work. She worked as a cleaner for an elderly, well, a rich elderly lady, and sometimes she took me with her. When she took me with her, I would lounge around reading the daughter's books. I was an avid reader. I just loved reading. I can't remember when I first started to read. I was quite a lonely, rather strange child that liked reading and would read the books in the bookcase, including the pictures um, dictionary. So I was reading well before I went to school. But there was a reason. But there was a reason why I read so much because it was in the 1950s. And back then, it was a quieter world. It was very quiet. We had no TV, no gadgets, and the only radio we had was rarely on. My dad read in the evening, and in the daytime, I would help him in the garage, or in the, in the shed, or in the garden, and spend lots of time with him. Then, the tea time, he would bring, when it was tea time, he would sit me on, on his knee and he would bounce me up and down and, and sing, gallopy, 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 comes the gallopy major. Don't know if anybody knows that, mm -hmm. probably before most of your time. But then when it was bedtime, my dad took me up to bed and it was always, come on, up the apples and pears to Uncle Ned. And when we got up the stairs, he'd be on his shoulders, he would tuck me up in bed, kiss me. And then he would say, now it's time for Bo Peep. My dad was a Cockney. He came from the East End of London. And I guess, spending time with him, I was a Cockney, had a Cockney accent too. I didn't, wasn't really aware of this, and I wasn't really bothered how I spoke. I just had my toys and my pets to talk to. But I remember my mother telling me how she was out walking with me one day and a companion came past and a lady came past and the companion that was with her said, Oh look, look at that little French girl. And my mother would tell me this to remind me how I didn't speak very well. <laughs> well, I went to school and at school they were amazed because I could read every book which they offered to me, which they offered me. But I did not know how to pronounce the words. I wasn't even sure about spelling the words e either. And I remember the head, te head saying to my mother, well, she, she could read well, but she misses out all the words that she cannot pronounce. So I sort of speed read at that age and missed out words. Well, as I say, it wasn't really surprising because of my quiet kind of life. My brother was 12 years older than me. We had all elderly neighbours around us. I didn't play with children. I drew, did jigsaw puzzles, and read, and read, and read. So, it was a, as I say, it was a quiet world. And then comes school. I hated school. I just did not like school. I was bullied by the teachers and the staff and the teachers and the children, it was a nightmare for me, school was. And it wasn't very long before I was told that I needed 
speech therapy. So off we went to the speech therapist. At the, at the speech clinic. I love this. Hooray! I was going out to school. I was getting some time off, off on the bus with my mum. And the speech therapist was so nice. She was kind, gentle, encouraging. She gave me a little notebook and put verses in it and put pictures in it. And when I could read it nicely, I got little stars. She wasn't anything like the belligerent Dr. Higgins in My Fair Lady. And I must admit, I was probably a little Eliza Doolittle trying to say things instead of things <laughs> and house instead of as. <laughs> <laughs> but, she, but soon I was learning to say things like sea cells, sea shells on the sea shore. So I had to practice that for tonight. But I do, I do thank her. But then fast forward, well, nearly, nearly, nearly 70 years from when I started school, and I'd grown more confident, I'd grown more used to speaking. I actually, at, at school, was chosen to speak to the whole assembly to read, and they said how they loved me reading because I could speak so loud and clearly, so I had changed. But I started to go back to, I went back to university, did lectures, did talks and seminars, and became a lay minister, and speech was important. But then came lockdown, COVID, and I had to start learning something different. So I did talks on Facebook, I did my little sermons on Facebook, but then replayed them back afterwards, and I thought, oh, it's so dull. I don't like my voice. It's boring, and I'm using notes. The minister always insisted that I send her my sermons and she would tell me what changes I had to make and told me, reminded me that I must not deviate from what was on the script. So speaking impromptu was quite strange to me and I knew that I needed to learn this and I needed help and I needed help to do this. So then Yes, you can guess what's coming. I looked and found the Swindon Speakers Club. And I learned that it doesn't matter what you say, you can't speak about sex or politics, but, or religion, but it also matters how you say it. You have to use gestures, you have to do nice facial expressions, but you have to get the tone right, and so many other things to use your voice, but it didn't matter if you had a regional accent. Diversity was welcome. You could, you could speak with a broad accent and I don't think anybody would criticise you. It was, it was just so refreshing to know that you could be welcomed however you spoke. And I just want to say that also I'm a lot shorter, so I'm coming up towards the end of the time, so I'm sorry it's shorter, it took me longer before, but I'm, I'm not reading notes. <laughs> I am trying to use my voice to do what is needed of me and show expression, knowing it doesn't matter if I speak quietly or whisper, I can still be it could still be heard, or I can shout and wave my arms about but it doesn't matter. And I do thank you for that. I thank you so much for the welcome that you've given me and for all that you are continuing to teach me.